Hey guys, Carlo Filippo in here, your muscle chef, ready to talk to you about this guy, the chicken pound. What do we do with the chicken pound? We prepare grilled chicken in different flavors, six to be exact. If you're serious about bodybuilding and your meal prep, don't go anywhere else. This is the company for you. You want to safeguard your health, maximize your immune system, grow muscle and lose fat faster? Grova Immune is not herbs and spices. It's not a proprietary blend. It's patented. It's a one-of-a-kind product. It's backed by science from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Grova is a protein antibody. It's different. It's real science and gets real results. Check us out at Prova.com. RX Television on RxMuscle.com. This is Ask Dave, better known as Hashtag Ask Dave, your 30-minute question and answer show with Dave Palumbo. I'm your host, Sadiq Faruqi. Big, big content week on RxMuscle.com. Yesterday, we released the episode of After Hours, a hilarious, hilarious hour plus uh, with uh, Greg Valentino, Jimmy the Bull, John Romano, uh, Mr. G, of course, Dave hilarious hilarious stuff it was it was a kind of chaotic episode where dave couldn't even get a word in and it was all worth the laughs um dave spoke to kevin lavroni earlier today a blockbuster in and of itself and then earlier earlier on today roger stone so roger stone some big big inside information he's going to reveal on this interview we should be dropping it tomorrow um on rxmuscle.com and the rx muscle youtube channel but dave we do start on a bit of a somber note uh, we did post this short while ago, a tribute video you did for uh, Joanna Thomas, female pro bodybuilder who passed away earlier this week. Yeah, it's unfortunate that uh, every, it seems like every week I have to report that someone else has passed in our industry. Is, uh, it's, it's almost at the point of absurdity. But yeah, she, I, I was friends with her back in the early 2000s um, when she was competing. And ironically, um, I remember her telling me... Um, wait till you see my training partner on stage. She's going to be the, the next big star in bodybuilding. And that turned out to be my wife, Amanda Dunbar, <laughs> who's now Amanda Palumbo. So it, it's, you know, it talked about full circle. So I know Joanna for a while. And, you know, she was a very outspoken person. She had a really good physique, uh, great potential. One of the youngest people ever to turn pro in the IFBB in women's bodybuilding. And, um, you know, it's a shame we lost her. So uh, I try to do a little bit of a tribute, something that I think that she would have really uh, respected and uh, felt that was honest. And hopefully people, it resonates with people. But uh, yeah, another sad loss. Hopefully I, I don't have any more to report in the next, in the forecoming, uh, you know, I guess, or the, the, the near future. Let's get to the questions. Again, the first two questions from the Dave Palumbo Experience app. The first question uh, what do you think about using Nolotil? I don't like the idea of the, quote, new SEO. I have a very balanced physique, but biceps are flat like bricks, and an arm only measures 17.5. I feel extra bicep size on stage could be a game changer for me. Please advise on specifics or if you use or if you promote the idea. Uh, I did review your SEO protocol in the app. Thank you for posting that. Yeah, you know, the, the use of nolotl, which is very similar to uh, what we used back in the day, which was Essaclean, okay? Essaclean was a, a, a steroid that would cause inf localized inflammation and, and make the muscles swell a little bit. The problem is that it only really worked good with people who had really <laughs> good genetics for arms. Um, I, I always found that it, it, 
it really did very little for my arms other than make them look red. So, um, whereas a guy who had a nice bulbous bicep, you put it in there and it made it look bigger, you know. So, I, I don't find that nilotyl or Essiclean is something that is going to add inches to your arms. It's just going to enhance what you already have, which if you don't have a lot of or you're lacking there, is not going to really do very much. That's why I, you know, I promote the use of the site injection oils, only two specifically that really have science behind them. One is uh, the Chris Clark Original uh, Synthesized and Painless Pumps, both of which I sell at uh, DavePalumbo.com. Those, those actually have science behind them in terms of uh, not only volumizing the muscle, but building new tissue over the long period of time. So the longer you use them, the more of a positive a partitioning effect you get on that muscle, and you actually will build muscle locally. So that's what I would suggest you use. Now, if you're, if you're a guy you know, with superior genetics who just needs a little bit more size and a little bit more roundness, you go with those, those quick fix, as I call them, Essiclean, which is no longer around, or Nolotyl. You know, even some of the other water-based ones that will give you that kind of instantaneous inflammation only works good in a genetically gifted arm. Put it into a regular arm, trying to enhance, you know, you know, trying to add two inches to your bicep before you get on stage, it's not going to work. Second question again from the Dave Palumbo Experience app. Dave, my fats are lower than your recommended uh, 0.5 G per pound that you have in the plans listed. Should I lower my carbs some and add the fats in? I don't want to gain a bunch of weight by just adding calories. I'm about 50 grams of fat below where you suggest daily. It depends on your physique. You know, I, I would bring the fats up first and see how your body responds. And then if you need more food after that, you can add some carbs. So once you get to the, the threshold of what I recommend fat-wise, okay, and your body's still not responding in terms of putting on size or growing, then you could play with the, with the carbs. You know, then you just might, might need more fuel. And I usually base that based on how the person looks. If they look flat, it means they're glycogen depleted, so they definitely need more carbs. If they're full as a house and they're not growing, it's probably from lack of protein, or or maybe they're just not training well. Now, um, these two questions came from the Dumb Dave Palumbo Experience app, and for people who have, you know might not know about it, I'm not going to go through the whole spiel. But I offer an app. It off. It, it's all my uh, videos and articles I've ever written are up there. I do a, an exclusive Q and A for the app every single week. It's a video we put up in there, and then I answer everyone's questions on the app for free. Plus, we put up a, a workout every single week up there. Now we're offering for a limited period of time a free week. So if you go on the uh, you go to your iTunes store, or you go to your Android store, and you sign up for the app for twenty nine dollars a month. You're not going to pay anything for a week. They will not be charged anything. If after a week you want to continue, that's great. If not, you can just cancel. So you can get a free week. You can get exposure to all the stuff that's on there. And I think what you'll find is that you're, you're, it'll be your personal coach in your pocket, which is what a lot of people are looking for. Let's go to our Instagram questions. Again, if you're not following us, our handle is official underscore RX muscle. Let's go to Maddie Cat Lifts. What are the differences between the low bar squat and the high bar squat? Which is the most effective beneficial? Well, you know, I, I am assuming he's talking about placement of the bar in the back. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, tr I try to lower the bar at one point in my career. This is a true story. And I would squat, and what was happening was I was getting numbness down my arm. I didn't realize. I thought it was from training shoulders because I used to do arms and shoulders on the – excuse me. I used to do shoulders and legs on the same day. Don't ask. This is when I first started. I didn't know any better. And – I would do legs first, and then I would go to shoulders, and I, I, I had I would I had no strength in my right tricep. I couldn't figure out what I what I was doing is I was pin took me about three months to figure what was going on. I was pinching a nerve in my trap, which is which innervated down my entire arm. So I think it's dangerous to hold that, put the bar too low. So I always put it up on, on the higher part of the traps. It seems to be the most comfortable. You can kind of have a good good hold here with your arms. And that's really where it should should sit. It should not sit too far down. Once again, because the nerves come out of the trap there. Let's go to Escobar season. Can you take probiotics at night? Why or why not? If you're trying to heal the gut, how long would it be? Ballpark one to three months, three to six. Uh, thank you. You know, a lot, sometimes if I'm feeling like you know maybe I went on a, uh, an antibiotic prescription and maybe my I feel like the, my gut bacteria are a little are not doing so well. I'll use a probiotic in my fiber lye shake at night before bed. So yeah, that's a good, that's a fine time to take it. I mix it right into the fiber lye shake and I drink it down. Believe it or not, the soluble fiber is actually the food that, that these probiotics eat. They ferment it and that's what helps them to grow. 
So you're actually feeding the gut bacteria with the fiberized product that you're taking at the same time, kind of dual function, so that you can kind of seed your whole colonic uh, flora with that stuff. So, yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter really when you take it. You can take it in the morning, during the day. It, it doesn't matter. As long as it's getting into your gut, you're fine. You can take it with food, without food. There's no rules, you know, as to when you need it. Now, how bad your gut is will dictate how long it will take to replenish. Because what happens is the bacteria coat and they grow and they coat the inside of your colon or small intestine and it will protect, create a protective layer. Now, if you've done damage to the lining of your colon or your small intestine because all that bacteria have been you know, dissolved array or, or killed off, now you're, you, you have to give time for the gut lining to heal itself. So it depends on what kind of damage you've done. Most people haven't damaged the lining, they've just worn away all the, all the good bacteria. So, uh, you know, it could be a week, it could be three or four weeks. Once again, it depends on how much damage you've done. Let's go to Wessel, 1494. Um, Dave's opinion on micronutrients. What are micronutrients and do they have a place in bodybuilding? Well, of course they do. Now, this, this, we divide this, anything we put into our body into macronutrients and micronutrients. The macros or your macronutrients are your protein, fat, and carbs. Your micronutrients are your vitamins and minerals and trace metals. So you absolutely need the micronutrients because remember, the vitamins, the minerals, the trace metals are the cofactors in every chemical reaction in your body. So all the chemical reactions that run your, your, your body require these, these vit vitamin B1 you know, is necessary and B2 is necessary for carbohydrate metabolism. You know, there are different uh, chromium necessary for, 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 for um, glucose entry into the cell you know, when insulin is present. All these are necessary for our bodies to function adequately. So we can eat the right foods, but a lot of the food sources that we consume are devoid of, of vitamins and minerals because the soil is depleted, because we don't really eat a lot of fruits and vegetables because of the sugar content as bodybuilders and because we're so concerned about getting enough protein and fat and carbs. So it's easier to take a supplement, and that's why I made V-mineralize for your vitamins and minerals, and I made Omegalyze for your essential fatty acids because it... Sometimes you just can't get the right amount. You're better off having an insurance policy. Hey, I know I'm getting the right amount of vitamins, minerals, trace metals, and essential fats in my supplement form. Then I could just function and focus on eating the right macros, protein, fat, carbs, in my diet. And it takes the guesswork out. In other words, you're ensuring that you're taking in everything that you need. And I well, believe me, I research very well what the body's requirements are for vitamins, minerals, and trace metals. The only thing that I would add to be mineralized, believe it or not, is extra vitamin D. Because I think, from my experience, you, you need about five to 7,000 IUs a day of vitamin D3 to get your levels up to what they need to be on blood work. So there's 2,000 in V-mineralized, so I usually recommend that people take an extra 5,000 units of, of vitamin D3 per day. But other than that, you know, everything's pretty much in there. And, and once again, they are necessary, the micronutrients, because of the fact that they're cofactors in chemical reactions. Let's go to Big Ant 1026. Why do people eat a muffin or a Pop-Tart before training and use insulin? The sugar foods will not do the same pre-workout without the insulin, correct? Well, I mean, if you eat sugar, your body's going to release insulin on its own. I mean, you don't, you don't need to take a shot of insulin every time you eat sugar in your body. You... Theoretically, if your pancreas is working correctly, you, your body will release its own insulin. Um, why people take in sugar before they work out? I don't know. They, if, if they feel good, you know, it, it gives you a feel good. You get a little burst of your blood sugar goes up. You feel like you have a little bit more energy. Um, unfortunately, if you're doing it on an empty stomach, a lot of times you, you, you go up and then you crash down. And I didn't like, that's why I never really liked taking like simple sugars in before I trained without, without a protein source. Now, if you're having a, like, you know, a whey isolate shake and you're eating a Pop-Tart, you know, you'll probably be all right. Now, I personally wouldn't do that. I would rather use a high molecular weight carbohydrate. I recommend people as a pre-workout use, you know, a scoop or two of my isolized, which is a pure whey isolate with, okay, Usually, like a scoop of a high molecular weight carbohydrate, I make a product called Carbolize, very popular. I have an unflavored and I have a banana flavored one that you can use either one of those. And then usually I, I even have people add a little bit of fat to their pre-workout shake because sometimes whey isolates and high molecular weight carbs are absorbed so quickly into the bloodstream that you could actually get low blood sugar during the middle of your workout. By adding like a fat, like a tablespoon of macadamia oil to that mix, which is what I usually recommend for my pre-workout, those three things, 
it will slow the it'll slow it down just enough so that you won't get you know crazy spike and, and drop. It, it slows it down just enough, and, and I think people get a nice release and they feel good during their workouts when they do that little mix. So um, that's just the way I, I like to do it. But you know, it's like I said, some people sometimes they're really hungry before they get to the gym. They have low blood sugar. Simple sugars will boost your blood sugar up pretty quickly and enable you to get into the gym and start training. So, you know, I mean, every, to each his own. As long as you're not getting fat from eating these things and uh, you don't mind eating the simple sugars. I never was a big simple sugar guy, but, you know, I've had my fair Pop-Tarts, you know, back in the day when I weighed 315 pounds. <laughs> but always with protein. Um, speaking of carb sources, Rob Tealot. Uh, how do you feel about substituting watermelon for other carb sources when dieting for a show? The GI is similar to popular carbs uh, like white rice, but you can have so much more of it volume-wise. Yeah, you know, once you start trying to play that volumizing game, you're like, oh, I'll eat, you know, uh, 16 pounds of cabbage because it has no calories. All you're doing is stretching out your stomach, and it's you're always your body's gonna always be expecting large volumes of, of food to keep yourself satiated. When you don't eat large volumes of food, your stomach actually shrinks in size, and then you don't eat as much food to actually feel full. So it's actually functional to have smaller volumes of food while you're dieting that are denser in calories. You know, I think that's a better way to go. Plus, watermelon is simple sugars. You know, all most fruits are just simple sugars. So. It's not really a great source of, of, uh, of carbs. I like a, a carb source that requires some digestion so that you get that trickle effect into your bloodstream. Rice, even though it's a, sim it, it's a high glycemic carb, it still has to be digested. It's not instantaneously going into the bloodstream, causing a huge, massive spike of insulin. So I think that uh, it's a mistake to be eating simple sugars, even fruit like watermelon, you know, on a diet. Uh, it's a funny one here. I, I wanted you to talk a little bit more about uh, last night's after hours. And for those who haven't yet watched it, the question is from MD1021. Uh, it, it was sort of an inside joke that was sparked in the comment section last night from last night's episode. Is there anybody that Greg Valentino didn't know or wasn't his best friend 20 <laughs> years ago? <laughs> so, he, he had to read some of the comments. I think the top comment was something about. You asking about the moon landing, <laughs> Greg Valentino, like, yeah, like, you... Uh, I know Buzz Aldrich, yeah, I knew him. <laughs> no, you know what the funny years. thing is about that show? I don't remember a single thing. Sid will, <laughs> Sid will literally call me, like, a couple hours yeah. after I do these shows, and he'll be like, what did you guys talk about so I can do the, uh, you know, I can make the title and everything like that. I'm like, you know what? I don't, I don't even remember. I can't even remember. It's so, sometimes those shows are so insane with everyone talking you know, and, and telling their crazy stories that I don't even remember what we talked about the whole episode. I'm like shell-shocked after it. I know that Mr. G was surfing, and I know that Jimmy yeah. the Bull was driving a truck, and, and, and everything <laughs> after that I don't remember. But no, yeah, Greg, look at it, remember, Greg has been bodybuilding since the 70s. So, you know, when we talk about, you know, old times, he knows a lot of people. He, you know, even back in the day, he was going to club, the club scene in the, in the 70s and 80s. So, that's why when you hear the stories about Mark Wahlberg, he, he was there with all those guys, you know, back in the day. And so he does have a lot of experience with, with you know, the – and remember, he promoted shows, too, when he was younger as well. So a lot of the guys that were pros, he had in as guest poses. I know you've heard the Lee Haney and the Paul DeMeo stories a million times. but So he does know those guys, and he did know those guys. And then a lot of the people from the 90s and early 2000s, he knows because he was selling drugs to them. <laughs> so there's – there's a lot of history that Greg knows about. You know, the, the question is, are we going to hear the same story over and over? But that, that's what I love about Greg. He's like your, your, you know, your father. You know, you, even if you hear the same story, you're still going to laugh just as hard because it's a great, he's a great storyteller. So, again, if you haven't seen After Hours yet, it, it is a hilarious hour, usually, episode. Um, it's pretty much the reincarnation of heavy muscle TV, just the more yeah. funnier, edgier yeah. version uh, it's a hilarious cast. You, you have to check it out. So I think what we're going to do, you know, it's it. I was thinking about it because someone emailed me a suggestion and I, I think I might, and I, I kind of modified this suggestion a little bit, but I think I might start the show out from now on with just John and I for the first 20 minutes and it's then not bring a bad in the idea. rest of these guys because yeah. John and I don't get an word in edgewise. It was originally supposed to be a show <laughs> about with John and I, and then, and yeah. then of course I wanted to bring Valentino in and then Jimmy came in and then Mr. G. So I think John and I should do 20 minutes alone. Then we'll, we'll call the other guys in and we'll, and we'll do the rest of the show with them in there. That might be a better way to go. <laughs> thought, but yeah, no, it's it, it's definitely worth checking out if you haven't already watched it. Uh, back to the questions. Um, 
Engroyer31, just started using Fiberlize, loving the product, take half a scoop twice a day, wonderful. When should I be moving to a full scoop twice a day? Also wondering, he's in Canada, uh, if Canada can start getting those good sales and free shipping over $100. Yeah, first of all, we have a, a Canadian distributor. Um, so you can go to the Canadian, the species nutrition dot, well, I think it's CA website. Yeah. Or species nutrition dot com dot CA or something like that website. And you can buy from them direct. And so you're going to save, the shipping is going to be way cheaper. Okay. We can't do free shipping to Canada because it's too expensive from, from my personal website, from the species nutrition website. That's why we have a Canadian distributor. So you guys don't have to go through customs. It doesn't have to go through tariffs and whatever else goes on over there when we ship from the United States. And they'll run, run periodic sales over there. So you're going to save money by going on their site and buying it. And I think that, that's, the, uh, that's probably the, the best solution. Just like I have, we have a New Zealand distributor now too. You can go to the New Zealand Species Nutrition website. And I know everyone in Australia and New Zealand can buy from them, which is great because you're going to save the crazy shipping fees that we have. Um, we can do free shipping in the United States you know, over a $100 order because it, it's not that expensive. Once they go international, the fees go way up. I'll lose money on the sale if I give you guys free shipping. Um, do you answer the question about Fiberlize? Oh, no. No, yeah. Oh, yeah, when yeah, am no, I going to go up? Yeah. yeah, half yeah. a scoop twice a day, wondering when he should be moving to full scoop twice a day. If you're tolerating a half a scoop twice a day and it's not bothering your stomach, you're not getting crampy or anything, then go definitely go right to the, the full scoop. A lot of guys go right to one scoop twice a day, have no problem. But some people have a weaker colon. And you have to build up the musculature of the colon. Those are the people, usually women, that need to start lighter and then build up to it. If you've used a fiber supplement already, even if it's not as strong as Fiberlize and as good, you probably can go right to the full serving size. Let's go to O'Brien of John. Is Are there any negative side effects of using Clen long term? Also, is it okay to use in the off season just for the endurance properties? There really is no side effects long term that we know of. Um, Every once in a while you read a study about the heart, but I, 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 don't, I don't buy into that. I will tell you one thing. Take, when you take clenbuterol, it increases glucagon output. Now glucagon is the hormone that does the opposite of what insulin does. Uh, instead of storing glucose okay, as glycogen in the muscles, it takes the, the glucose out of the muscle cells or out of glycogen storage and re releases it into the bloodstream. So it raises blood sugar. So a lot of times, sometimes people will run high blood sugars if you use clenbuterol long term. So keep an eye, you might want to test your, go buy that $9 glucose monitor at Walmart, the rely on one, and test your blood sugar in the morning. And if you're running over, a, you know, 100, or excuse me, over 90 uh, as a fasting blood sugar, you, you, it could be from the clenbuterol. So that you want to keep an eye on because we don't want to run high blood sugars. Let's go to Stumpy McBeth. Love the name. I'm in my late 30s. I want to get on TRT. How can I make sure my levels are low enough to get on? Well, I mean, if, you, if you're low by nature, then that's, that's, that's one thing. If you're not low and you want to get on TRT, a lot of times if you're in the lower end, they'll still put you on TRT even though you might not be, um, according to the, um, the ranges, below the normal, so to speak. Uh, no one says you have to be below 250 to get TRT. You could be three, 400. That's still low normal, and you might want to just raise that up. So that you got to talk to – if you go to titanmedicalcenter.com – and you contact them and you tell them that we sent you, obviously you're gonna get the RX muscle discount, they can advise you better. You know, now for people who are, I know guys who do cycles, you know, if your testosterone is high, you know, and you go get tested, they're not gonna put you on TRT, so you probably wanna go off. It usually takes three to four weeks for like long acting testosterone to come out of your system. So a lot of people ask me how long should I wait? I always tell people, go off everything for four weeks, don't even stay on HCG. Let your levels come down real low and then go get tested so that at least you, you show a need for, for the te uh, for testosterone replacement. Uh, if you go in at, you know, a week or two after you, you stop your cycle, your levels will probably still be high. They, legally, they can't prescribe it to you if that's the case. Let's go to Martin Slakes Fitness. How would you suggest to do if there is a six to, week, six to eight weeks between competitions? How about a few weeks add a bit of size and then die into the next show rest of the time? Yeah, I mean, that's what I would, I would give. I'd give the person two weeks to eat. Um, I would dramatically probably increase their carbs, uh, cut back their cardio and fat burners, you know, kind of de-peak them and then re-peak them again for the last, you know, five to six weeks. 
And it depends on the person's metabolism. If I know I'm working with someone with a gifted metabolism, I could let them, maybe I go four, till four weeks out and then start dying them. If I have someone who can get fat real easy, I'm not gonna let them go too crazy because then that's gonna undo all the hard work we did. And so once again, it comes down to you know, who the person is that you're working with. Let's go to, uh, I'm gonna say this one towards the end because people love these kind of questions. Um, Here's an interesting one, and I know a lot of people are going to hear this question and say, well, you guys are one to talk, but I do want you to get, elaborate a little bit upon, um, you know, obviously what stemmed with Generation Iron uh, last week airing right. the priest's mother, um, and then I guess this back and forth that has gone on for a few years now between sure. some of the media outlets from Vigar S91. Do you think that there is too much, too many media outlets for bodybuilding that are promoting dispute rather than focusing on making the actual sport better? You know, it, there's always this, dispute is good for business, for everyone's business, because it, it sparks a little controversy. Look, all the newspapers used to compete with each other. The Weeder magazines competed with MD back in the day when, when the magazines were relevant. So there's always going to be a little bit back and forth. I don't have a problem with Generation Iron whatsoever. Um, I, I, I get along with Vlad. I've actually been to his offices in Manhattan you know, several years back when the original Generation Iron movie came out. No problem with them whatsoever. I think they're doing good work. I think the documentaries they make over there are mostly good. Um, I know Lee Priest had took, you know, was told that his documentary that they made with him, that they paid him a lot of money for, they paid him seven thousand dollars. He even admitted that um, was he was going to have the right to first refusal in terms of before they went to the final edit, he'd be able to get to see the, the thing, and if he didn't like it, they would make changes. That was in his contract supposedly, and he felt that they left out a lot of the people who really knew him. And they put in like Jay Cutler, uh, who didn't know him very well, as, instead of putting in the, the people that Lee grew up with. And so Lee was upset with that, and they didn't want to re-edit it for whatever reason. I don't know why. And so it, it created an animosity there, and Lee didn't like the, the final product and didn't promote it. Now, I just my point that I made was that I felt that it was, it was a foolish business move for Generation Iron, because what they should have said is, hey, Lee Priest is, is the most marketable guy in our industry. He always has been. You want this guy getting behind your documentary because they're, they're charging to download the documentary. So if Lee is out there telling everyone how great the thing is, they're gonna, people are going to go download and watch it. If Lee says it sucks, it's going to hurt business for them. So I don't know why they didn't re-edit or, or work with Lee to make Lee happy on the documentary, on the final product, but they didn't. So Lee went off you know, on them, on, on his, the typical Iron Rage show that we do every week. They got offended. They went back into their, into their I guess, whatever uh, footage that they had taken for the documentary originally, originally, one of which was an interview with his mom, uh, where she talked about where Lee was bullied as a kid. And they put that in there, and they titled it, Why Lee Priest is a Bully. His mother tells why, or something like that. And the funny thing is that the mother never even said that Lee was a bully. He said that She said that he was bullied. Kids made fun of him because his father was gay, and they knew that. She never said Lee was a bully. So they kind of misquoted her in the title and they used her almost as a way to like kind of, you know, give Lee the, the finger on the way back to kind of say, ha, we got you back. Lee is the last person you want to, you know, piss off and, and argue with on social media because he loves, he thrives on that type of stuff. So it's like giving him ammunition to go after you. So Lee's been on a rampage against these guys, you know, and, and, and. I can't stop him. I mean, that's what he does. I, and I give him, I, you know, one of the things that I, he, I agreed to when Lee decided to work with us and do Iron Rage is that I said, you can talk about whatever you want. I said, you're, this is your show. I said, it's, you're free to say what you want. I'm not going to censor you. And so I let him say what he wants. And so, you know, the, the problem is that now there's a back and forth. Now, I'm sure if I got Vlad in a room, you know, from Generation Nine, and we were alone and no one was around, he'd say it's good for business, you know, and agree it's good for business because, you know, more people checking out his stuff, more people checking out our stuff. But I don't know if he actually took real offense to what Lee said, but I, you know, they should have sat down and worked it out because the documentary could have been really, really good. And, and if Lee loved it, he would have promoted the hell out of it. So I think it was, a, I think they, they didn't take the right strategy with Lee. But Dave, I am going to go back to the original question yeah. because this <laughs> this does seem to be uh, – it's an obvious theme over the course of the last few years. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you a specific example, right? Uh, I believe it was a 2016 Arnold Classic, the one where um, Ahmad Ashkenani won the 212. So yeah. it was 2016 or 2017. Let's just say 2016, whatever. 
there were more people coming up to us all weekend, not about the actual competition, but to talk to us about the backstage confrontation that took place between us and MD and Sean Ray. And that's just one example. Right. That seems to be, you know, whenever there's drama, yeah. you know, and it's not just us and MD, obviously Generation Iron. There has been drama, you know, with the other media outlets as well. It, it, it seems to be a common theme. And I think his question is more so, have media outlets sort of, you know, really tried to feed on that as opposed to, all right, let's just, let's talk about the sport, the sport, the sport. It's clickbait. Come on, man. You know, look, I, you know what happens? We, You know what happens. Every once in a while, once a year, once every two years, we have some crazy incident like this, right? And I go nuts because if so, I see injustice anywhere, you know, or I think we're being, you know, treated, mistreated, I'll go crazy and I'll, and I'll go off on a tangent and I'll start exposing, you know, what's going on. And that, you know, in, in that sense, I'm like, Lee, I don't like to be accused of doing something that I didn't do. And, you know, Sean started all that stuff, you know, backstage at the Arnold that one year. And I went crazy. And, you know, it was ridiculous, the whole thing, really. And after a while, I got so burnt out on it. I didn't even want to. I said, why am I even talking about this? But, you know, it got its hits, and we just let it die off, and that was the end of it. And, you know, Sean and I talk, and I get him on the show, and it, 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 there's no bad blood. It's, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's gimmicks, you know. It, look, it, it's, it sells tickets, so to speak. Um, it's not important, but let's face it, 99% of what we do at RX Muscle is not shtick like that it's not you know pomp and circumstance it's it's legitimate either coverage of the show analysis educational stuff fun stuff like after hours but you know if, if something gets thrown off our face and there's there's some controversy we, we're going to cover it you know but i'm not going to beat it to death i some of these outlets out there that's their whole shtick their whole youtube channel is basically exposing and going after other outlets as to not being authentic uh, luckily, very few people can accuse us of not being authentic because we're, we're maybe too authentic, you know, for our own good. Um, is it good for business? Of course it's good for business. Is it a negative type of thing? If it's constantly done, yes. I think if you pepper it into your coverage, I don't think it's such a bad thing. Let's go to Brian Lack 357 I'm sure this has been asked before. Uh, periodically you'll answer it, but people love to hear about these stories. Craziest cheat meal you've ever had during your career? Um, it, you know, it's not going to sound as glamorous as people think, um, but it was probably the most disgust. Like, I had gone to, and I've told this story before, I had gone to help a girl who won the Junior USA Bodybuilding uh, overall, uh, Donna Restivo at the time, in uh, Myrtle Beach. And Myrtle Beach, if you, if you guys have ever gone there, Myrtle Beach, it's basically a buffet town. And I was dieting for the USA in 1996 at the time, and I said, I am not going to cheat. We were going to all these buffets and eating, and I was just eating like my diet food. I said, when I get back, because I used to save my cheat meal for the weekend, I would go to this all-you-can-eat sushi place in Manhattan, because it was the only place that had an all-you-can-eat sushi place at the time. And I just looked forward to it. That was my cheat meal every week. Well, when I got back from the show on Sunday, I got in my car from Long Island. We drove to the, um, the city. I went to my all-you-can-eat sushi place, and I was so hungry from starving myself all weekend, and it was a busy weekend, and it just, I, I, and from seeing those buffets, I ate so much sushi. See, literally, I must have eaten 150 pieces. That it was, I, it, literally, I don't think I could have gotten another piece down my throat, because it was like, it was, I think the last roll was still sticking out of my throat. That's how full I was. I couldn't get into the car, that's how full my stomach was. I had to walk around the block about three times, and... I literally, if I would have leaned over, I would have thrown up. I would have thrown up. That, that's how full I was. It was, it was, I was so mad that I overate so much that on the way home from New York City to Long Island, my sister was living in Queens at the time, which was like halfway point. I stopped at her apartment because I had, I had, I had bought a, a life cycle and then I had given it to her when she moved out because she really needed it and I, I wasn't really doing cardio at the time. So I gave it to her. I stopped at her place and I rode the bike in her place I was so nauseated by what I did for, for, for like 45 minutes before I finished driving all the way home. That's how full it was. That was the most disgusting the cheat meal I ever had. And once again, it wasn't like McDonald's and, and shakes and, and all the glamorous foods you would think, but I, I seriously, the volume of food that I ate, I don't think any other human being could have consumed. It was so much, you probably could have mounded, it probably if you would have stacked the rolls up, it probably would have come up to here. That's how much food I ate. And finally, last question from 2RI Profit. And another one we probably answered before, but 
who had the most aesthetic physique of all time, the body that every woman wants to be with and every man wants to have? I don't know. You know, we think as bodybuilders that women like big, huge, muscular guys, but I, I don't really think that's the case. I think bodybuilding or people who work out might like that, but the general population probably thinks we're all disgusting. But um, <laughs> as far as the, I think the, the, some of the greatest symmetry of all time probably was Flex Wheeler. I mean, it, you know, let's let's face it, from a bodybuilding pure standpoint, I mean, the guy had a teeny tiny waist. He had big arms and shoulders and chest, good back. I mean, symmetrically speaking, I mean. I mean, that's it. I always tell people, however, if I had to pick one physique that I would want to look like, like if I had to say, okay, you know what, this is the guy I want to look like, I would have picked Tony Freeman's physique, and I've said this before, and Tony knows I've told him this before, because he looked, when he walks through the airport, he looks like an athlete, he looks like a professional athlete. So he, and he has beauty, he has a teeny tiny waist, he's six foot two, he's, he's got perfect V shape, I mean, they called him the X-Man, I mean, the guy, has all the tools, you know, to, you know, that you would possibly want in a great physique. Uh, I think that you know he had a pec tear and that hurt him a little bit in his career. I still believe in 08 that he could have been, you know, first or second at the Mr. Olympia. That's the year Dexter Jackson won. I thought he was probably his best at, at that time. But the, I love his physique. I think he has a beautiful physique because he's tall and he once again he looks athletic, like he could play any sport out there and be great at it. But probably from a bodybuilding standpoint, Flex Wheeler probably had the most beautiful physique of all time. And when he was at his best, when he won the USA and he won that first Arnold Classic, he was unbeatable. That's going to do for this episode. Reminder, tomorrow on RX Muscle, we're going to have our interview one-on-one -on -one with Kevin Lavroni. All sorts of different topics Dave and Kevin discussed. The Maryland Muscle Machine on RxMuscle.com. And then, of course exclusive interview with Roger Stone. Roger Stone is going to reveal some never-before-told information on the interview, both those interviews tomorrow on rxmuscle.com and, of course, the RX Muscle YouTube channel. Special thanks, Tyler Shaw, producer, and Dave Palumbo. I'm Sadiq Faruqi. We'll see you next time.